Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is November 26th, 2022. Hopefully you had a good one, and by a good one I mean a Thanksgiving holiday, uh, Black, I guess Black Friday if you get into that. Um, I personally don't, I feel like it's definitely a scam these days, but that's whatever, you know, if you want to get in and get your TV, your appliance, whatever, hopefully you got something. Um, but man, all right, Food Corner. Food Corner, I feel like it's going to be good. I'm going to be serving this episode. Um, let's see, let's start with pre-Thanksgiving. Pre-Thanksgiving, I went to Drunken Bento. I'd been there before, just gotten sushi, um, which is what their mainstay is. But this time I looked at more of the menu or maybe the menu has changed over time. Last time I went was like, you know, years before the pandemic. So, um, I wound up getting, uh, the seafood dumbap. I think it's what it's called or do I don't know. I'm butchering the name, but it was very good. It was like a medley of like, it was like squid, crab, lobster, um i think calamari or something was in there i don't know it was a lot of action in there it was rice um they had kimchi they had um uh what was it like cucumbers or something like that i think on the side too um and it was in like a stone bowl with rice um it was really yummy 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 in my tummy then let's get to thanksgiving which we would say it's like act two I went to Family Friends. It was really good. It was yum, yum, yum. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying that. Um, but um, I'm trying to think, break down what I ate. I want to like probably just cover the highlights. Uh, turkey. Turkey was good. It was not dry. Yes, we love that. Then we had turnip greens, which was really good. It's yummy. <laughs> um, we had green bean casserole good yes yum of course i mean you're, you're pretty much getting yums across the board uh highlight for me was a sweet potato casserole that's my favorite dish to eat during the holidays so yes yes uh we had two versions the og with the marshmallows on top which is that's mine yes then we had the bourbon infused uh sweet potato casserole which was pretty good i was one of those things where i was expecting it to be kind of wild and whenever i just don't have the um marshmallows and we're leaning on just like the 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 nuts or whatever you know i think this was walnuts and i'm saying no maybe i'm wrong maybe it was pecans i don't know i was eating but it was good i enjoyed the flavor it was very sweet with the with the bourbon in it so also yum uh stuffing we had two versions the stuffing in the bird stuffing on the out very good um then also let's see in the desserts we had two types of sweet potato pie one was gluten-free one was you know with the gluten i'm a gluten boy so i'm pro gluten give me that one um and then we all uh, with 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 whipped cream and then we also had this thing that we had been talked we had talked about at previous like dinner gatherings or whatever but it was like a meat pie and it was always kind of something since Sweeney Todd that I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I wonder if they're worth the hype. Like, I mean, obviously, those meat pies, not so much. But, like, you know, what, what's the, what's all the word about them? Like, and, and so she went about, I'm pretty sure she made these. Yeah. So it was one of those things where it was a really cool flaky crust, which I really enjoyed. She said that um, she swapped out the raisin. And um, put in apple. And I was like, okay, all right. I'm a raisin guy, so I kind of would like to maybe try the raisin one day. But um, it was very interesting flavor. Having something so sweet but savory as like a baseline. Yeah, that was, that was pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Um, so, I mean, that's more or less a roundup of Thanksgiving. So into Act 3, Friendsgiving. <laughs> Uh, I did that yesterday with the homies in Northside, and it was fun. We had a good time. Also stuffing, also bird. Uh, what else was there? Green bean, casserole. Um, 
what was oh gravy and both both gravies were good also cranberries yeah like i'm gonna be missing some stuff but um something that was really cool with the friends giving someone had made i believe they made it um it was a hybrid apple and pumpkin pie and that thing was insane that was an insane invention um so good so good i didn't know i didn't like like it was weird how it just all came together in my mouth and i was like this is flame this is so good um so i mean yeah that's the food roundup oh wait and then i'm gonna throw in a little cherry on top i'm gonna give you my breakfast for the day i got a cinnamon roll but it was covered in pecans and caramel and like icing and then i got a maple donut maple ice donut i've been really feeling those lately i got like one at work and now i'm just like mm, i got the taste uh, but no bacon. I'm not a maple bacon bar guy. I think that's why I've been away from them for so long. But just maple icing, I'm with that. I'm with that. And then a blueberry cake donut because that's, uh, that's probably my favorite donut. So there you go. I'm sorry. I've dragged the food corner. Um, also, this is a celebratory episode. I figured I would celebrate on the pod with, with y'all. Um, I've done more than 100 episodes podcast-wise in, in some total. But I think since I started this, if my numbers are right, this is my 100th episode. And I wanted to, I guess, give myself a pat on the back and really say thank you in the pre um, for you guys just sticking around. Guys, gals, everyone in between, sticking around and listening. And, you know, to any new listeners, you know, who might, you know, come along the way and wind up listening to this, like... Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, it's it, This has been a fun project. I hope to keep doing this. I, I, I really, for like leading up to this, I was kind of like, I don't really care about 100 really. But a number I do care about is like 500. I don't know. like Because I, I just want to be doing that, doing this for that long. And um, so, yeah, I appreciate you. Any people, any of the newsies out there, obviously, who support any of this, the, the listeners just in general support by listening. You're awesome. Um, and if you, you know, you tell your friends and your people, you're awesome for that. That's crazy. You're wild. Um, but yeah, whenever I, I hear someone tell me uh, that they've listened or whatever, it, it, it puts a little glow in my heart. So thank you for that. Thank you for being a part of this. So this one is for you. And um, yeah, then we're getting to some news. Which is overall bleh, but whatever. <laughs> Ooh. Um. Ooh. Earthy notes. Filled flavors. Um, all right, we're going to start with um, the usual Russia or Ukraine news at the top of the weekend. Um, it's fine Saturday. Oh, I'm on the wrong slide. Here we go. Um, first one we got is from the BBC News. Uh, Ukraine war. Were Russian soldiers shot after surrendering? So I'm going to give you a synopsis here. Um, I initially heard this from the Global News podcast, so, you know, kind of just made sense, felt right to kind of source it from the BBC News. There are videos and links to this kind of, this whole situation. It is very graphic. I will tell you that up front. So, I wouldn't say, hey, if you're squeamish or you're not into this kind of thing, obviously, yeah, click ahead. Uh, I'm probably not going to spend more than, like, five, ten minutes on this whole thing with Ukraine and Russia, so, obviously, we move on to the next bump. But... Um, you know, for people who, you know, do want to know, obviously, um, essentially the situation was, um, soldiers, Ukrainian soldiers were, you know, captured on the front line via a drone video. And then also, um, there's actual camera footage up to a point and it shows, um, these Ukrainian soldiers, like, you know, calling out these guys from a shed and the soldiers are lying down on the ground and um you know they're all kind of filing out or whatever 
And then the next thing you see is this man literally in all black and he comes out and he just begins firing and then the video cuts and then you have more footage from the drone showing the dead bodies, which are Russian bodies. So this is obviously something that's very, this isn't good. I mean, it's a war crime situation, um, you know, from Ukrainian side. Now, granted, also, I mean, there's been countless videos of Russians, you know, Russian soldiers doing the same thing. I mean, it's something that has been captured on both sides. Um I will say um, Ukrainians have said a to, you know, counterpoint that they are saying that, like, I don't know if they're really saying necessarily this man, the man in black, um, was potentially a saboteur. And, like, this is all a setup and they were fake surrendering so that they could, like, set up and, like, ambush Ukrainian soldiers. So they're saying that's a common thing, which would also be a war crime in and of that itself. So, I mean... It's definitely one of those things where we're in like kind of like what I don't want to say fog of war. That's probably the wrong use of that phrase, but essentially, you know, both sides are kind of pointing fingers at each other. But this is a war crime kind of situation we're talking about. Um, also, I don't necessarily have an article pulled up for it, but this week I think there's been up to ninety four prisoner exchanges, um, like ninety four prisoners exchanged um, throughout the week this week. So, I mean, I think, I don't know if that's because of this video coming out and, like, more pressure, more of this being a conversation, you know, with the UN being involved and doing investigations. So, you know, overall, just, I would, it was one of those things where I, when I heard it, I was like, okay, I think this is definitely a highlight for the week that I wanted to cover and talk about. Um, definitely seeing some of the footage. I didn't look at the videos, but um, definitely like, oh, shit moment um i don't know, like and i hate to say it because like, i don't want to like belittle it or whatever but it it just has that same kind of f feeling of like when you're watching a snuff film and it, it takes me back to just little milestone moments you know especially for me i was very like sheltered from the internet in this regard because i was a christian kid and i just had my dad's work computer dial up so i wasn't touching that kind of stuff i had no notions to but, like, I remember even seeing on, like, I believe at one point they showed clips of that shit on the news of, like, Saddam Hussein getting hung. Stuff like that. I mean, uh, or even talks about beheadings and stuff that were happening. And uh, countries or, like, people who were, like, journalists or whatever getting kidnapped. I don't know. Shit was crazy. But anyway, just seeing footage like this um, definitely was, like, wow, very eerie. But I will say um, from, what is it, the source that we used um from the bbc uh they do have like they they go through it very well and they use at least the photography <clears throat> oh, excuse me and they line it up to show you like hey this is the place and like this lines up with both footage you can see that here here there's like a little toy car that you can see from the footage of the drone and then also it's in the camera shots so i don't know very eerie but you know Wanted to talk about it. Um, the next I have from the Washington Post. Essentially just an article that you can read. It'll definitely catch you up on the situation. We've referenced it throughout um, kind of like the, po the podcast, at least in the past few weeks, that Russia has been targeting the energy infrastructure of Ukraine. And essentially doing so is making the winter very very hard and i mean in the states that doesn't really resonate too well because i mean right now it's not cold it's not that bad i mean we had like a little bit of flurry that's about it but it's starting to like really snow now in ukraine it's starting to like really come down you're starting to really feel those bitter cold temperatures and they don't have power because of all of these missile strikes um, they're hitting non-military, even though, you know, from the Russian and they're saying, no, we are focusing on military infrastructure. What can you tell ya? But it's like, no, you know, from what it looks like on the ground, people are literally now struggling that they, they, you know, it, it's gotten to the point now where it's like, we are telling people that, yeah, like you need, it's probably best to leave. Um, they have to have like kind of rolling blackouts. Um, they are scheduled them. So it's like, you kind of can know like, Hey, you can be prepared. Like for these few hours, you're not going to have any power. 
Um, they, I think they have certain kind of shelters that are open too. But I mean, potentially you're not going to be able to get enough room. Or what if you're older, you can't even make the kind of trek. Um, and I mean, it's just it's wreaking havoc on the whole system not having electricity. Um, so I, I mean, this is essentially kind of retaliation from Russia to counteract losing territory, being in the situation that they're in. Uh, but it doesn't seem to necessarily be working because, I mean, it's not like people are coming to the table to negotiate. So, uh, I don't know. So, I mean, the article is definitely there to read. It is a long one. I will say it's a whale. Um, but I just kind of wanted to give you the long short there. Um, but we can get into some other news. Got this from the Associated Press. Indonesian quake kills at least 162 and injures hundreds. So this was a powerful earthquake took place on Monday. Um, really sad to see, you know, listen to some of the stories, read about some of these stories that are in this article. Um, don't want to like necessarily like bog down here on that, but um, it took place, you know, in like a mountainous kind of rural area. Um, so it took some time to kind of like get the number that we're at now. Um, for the 162, but I mean, I'm sure it might not even be just that, it might be more. Um, let's see, it does focus on the town of uh, Sien Jur in terms of like the coverage, like from the article. Um, roughly 175,000 people live in the town. Um, it shows a lot of pictures too from outside of the hospital, which were really sad. Um, I might be getting that confused with Java from in terms of the, the hospital thing. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, no, see in your uh, regional hospital building. Okay, no, I'm not. Um, sorry. But essentially, like, some of the pictures you can kind of see are people either holding up IV bags for, like, I I'm imagining their family members or friends, and people lying on the ground, and that's more or less a treatment area because the hospital is triaging what they can, and they're full to the gills with people damn you know who are you know been hurt injured you know wounded whatever from this earthquake um and i guess some details from this earthquake the kind of they talked to a person it hit in like three bursts um which is kind of like there's the earthquake and i think there's like aftershock that can kind of happen um i remember learning about that in grade school but I don't know, it didn't stick too well but um essentially though they said i think it was like 10 seconds was the first biggest wave. And apparently that just did so much damage. And then obviously with the aftershocks, it was, you know, even more so. Um, just talks like people getting like literally hit by building walls, uh, ceilings just coming down and the whole building just folding in on itself. Um, just really sad shit, really depressing. Um, but I definitely, you know, just wanted to talk about it, wanted to bring it up. Um, you know, that's, that's world news. It's weird that nature just happens this way. And like, there's just nothing that we can really do about it. But, you know, I do imagine that, I mean, there's probably ways to like donate, contribute, um, things of that nature, just like, you know, with, you know, Ukraine, all that. Um, so I, you know, it is always a chance as a rallying cry to like do the best we can. And, um, you know, I know the thoughts and prayers thing can kind of not work, but I, I do believe in positive thinking. I do believe in, like, you know what, the PMA, you know? I don't know. But, um, yeah, wanted to bring this up, talk about this. Um, I know this, the news is not going to get any better as we go. Um, actually, let me hydrate. Okay. Um, now the next two articles we have um, from the same thing from Yahoo News and the Associated Press. Uh, bodies drop as Walmart manager kills six in Virginia attack. And then I also have a um, connecting article uh, from CNN. Authorities disclose note found on Walmart shooter's phone. So... This, um, let's see, the shooter 
was I know his last name was Bing. Um, da, 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 da. So I needed to. I'm sorry about this. Um, Andre Bing, who was 31 years old, um, he was an overnight overnight team leader, and um, in the article from Yahoo News, it kind of shows a little bit more. I feel like about like his disposition, like how he interacted with some of the other employees. Essentially, they said like he liked to pick on people. He kind of like had, um, you know, that kind of demeanor where he just wanna, like kind of wanted to lord it around and kind of wanted to show that he was in charge. Um, whereas like in the letter, uh, being definitely kind of describes himself almost like he's victimized and like people would mock him and like sneer at him. And he wanted to, um, you know, make them all the same as him. And, you know, essentially because he winds up killing himself as well in the shooting at um, this Virginia Walmart. I believe it's in yeah, Chesapeake. Um, let's see. They do have the names of the victims. I do want to try to find that. Run that down. Um, I, yeah, they have the full list um, on the CNN article. Uh, Randy Blevins, who is 70 years old. Lorenzo Gamble, who's 43. Tynika Johnson, 22, Brian Pendleton, 38, and Kelly Pyle, 52. The city named a previous unidentified 16-year-old 16, 16 victim Friday, Fernando Chavez Barron. So, um, really sad that y these people just came in and clocked in. Um, essentially the situation more or less takes place in the break room, uh, you know, the start of shift kind of meeting. Um, and you know, this guy just starts in, he starts shooting. Um, there's a situation too, where there is a person who he sees her and he winds up like putting the gun to her head and he tells her to just go home. Like, like he aims a gun at the ceiling or whatever and she, you know he lets her go but she says that like she could hear the droplets of blood and like that was something that's like always going to stay with her like she just knows like like the next day is all she could think about um like i said he then you know goes to pull the gun on himself um he has this note on his phone so that's how you kind of know i guess a little bit more of his thoughts um I don't know. He also bought the gun legally. Um, he uh, bought it at that Walmart, I believe, like Tuesday. So, um, or yeah, the day before. Yeah. So. It's, it fucking sucks, man. Um, it sucks that you hear about all these kind of shootings. I don't have a link or reference to it, but there was another shooting in Brazil where a guy, he goes to, I believe, like, two different schools and, like, winds up shooting people. Um, I mean, it's the same. This is just international. Like, it goes everywhere. Um, and even in Brazil, I mean, it's not like it's, like, a hella common thing, but it just sucks that this shit just happens all the time. Um, it's just always on my news feeds. Um, you know, I, I try to, like have ways where I don't necessarily make it a, you know, a mainstay on the podcast, but it's just one of those things where you almost like, like you kind of have to do at least some of it. You have to talk about it. Some, you know, you do what you got to do. And, um, you know, obviously though, more importantly, you know, condolences to the families, the people, it, I, and it, it, this affects everyone, you know, in terms of the people who are working at that Walmart, even the customers, um, I mean, I, and that's the thing too, I'm not sure even from these two articles if it necessarily was only uh, employees that got shot um, and were killed, but um, it just, it, it, I can't imagine, you know, you're working at this Walmart and you saw the shit, you lived through this shit, you know, you're on the shift the next day, what are you going to do? Like, oof. Um, yeah, 
man, this is this this is all, this is life. This is um, you know, I I don't want to say these days. I think the stakes were always like this. You know, it's just uh, happening more often, and we cover it more. I don't know, but uh, we got one more bump, so you know what that means. Um. <laughs> Ooh. Mm-hmm. Simply the best. All right. I got this from Yahoo News slash Los Angeles Times. In Hollywood stunner, Robert Iger replaces or returns to head Disney as Bob Chapek exits. Um, so, I mean, technically, you know, average Joe, whatever the fuck, this isn't big news. Who gives a fuck? Whatever. The CEO is literally getting his job back from CEO he was supposed to, you know, who was his replacement. Weird. Whatever. But doesn't do anything. Um, I did think this was interesting just because um, Obviously, Chapik is someone we've covered a little bit, um, you know, especially with the whole situation with Florida and literally saying, like, DeSantis taking it to the level of, oh, oh, you want to try to, like, fuck with me? You want to try to, like, call me out? Then he's like, you guys can literally pay for your own shit now (laughs) Um, in terms of, like, Disney um, with their whole ordinance situation. And, like, they literally had, like, weird autonomy um but now they have to like pay taxes and stuff to the state and it, this whole weird kind of legal entanglement that walt disney was able to like get set up um that he allowed you know had protections and control at walt or at disney world <coughs> excuse me disneyland i don't know um correct me let me know whatever i don't travel but anyway essentially here Getting back to the article, um, Iger was a very iconic um, CEO. He, um, are they calling him chief? I don't know, whatever. Uh, He really did a lot of big moves that made Disney, which was obviously always a big thing, even bigger. Um, With the situation of getting uh, Pixar from... Steve Jobs, that was a big move because essentially now you have a way better animation team. Um, Obviously, we all support and love Pixar Moms. Um, But um, just, it it blows it out of the water. I mean, I think Pixar is definitely one of the best animation teams, studios, whatever. Um, So having that in your pocket is a major move. Then you went ahead and got... um, Marvel under your jacket. Um, that was another move under his stewardship. So, I mean, he's not playing around. And, I mean, I'm not mistaken. I don't think it's mentioned in this article. But, I mean, it would make sense on the timeline then that he was a part of the Star Wars acquisition. Um, right? So, I mean, he's not playing around. Whereas, like, I think a lot of naysaying is coming at Chapek because while he's been under the reins, a lot of this shit, like I said, with the whole floor situation, then there are people who are saying like, well, he wasn't even supporting us until we got mad at him. So it's not like we're really ups- like, we're just not like, well, that's really forgiven. Um, then just the financial hits that have been taken, you know, with the company. Cause even though Disney plus has grown, it's not grown enough to make them more money and it's not making it profitable. So it's like, mm, is this worth it? Is this guy really making the right moves for us? Um, so, I mean, kind of after the, you know, shaky fourth quarter situation, um, you know, in terms of like the analysis and predictions, all that financial mumbo jumbo. Um, I think JPEG was calling for, um, you know, more layoffs and stuff like that, which is like, no one likes to hear that. And, um, I don't know, I guess in this vacuum, you know, 
the powers that be have said, yeah, we want uh, Iger back. So he's going to be coming back for, I guess, like a two years at least. Uh, he's going to be back in the saddle. Um, feels like it, was, it might be his like Godfather 3 arc. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I feel like that was something I wanted to talk about. Cover. Do some coverage. Um, but thank you so much for sticking around. I mean, man, I've done this, like I said, about 100 times. That's crazy. Um, you're the best. If you'd like to, you know, donate, help out the cause, I do have a Patreon, patreon.com. So that's the news. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can donate any amount. Um, let me know if there's any, like, weird issues in terms of that. But I do have, like, the Newsy package, which is, like, the flat $5 um, essentially that donation every month will get you access to, uh, bonus content. I do some like extra episodes where I kind of talk about things that I, I won't, it's, sometimes it's risque ish. Sometimes it's just more pop news that I feel like isn't worth the main feed or I've covered it too much or I feel like I would. So it's like, let me just do some off episode stuff. So, you know, that's available. Also have a discord access that you get through the Patreon with the package little newsy package um and you get a shout out on the podcast um you know we do a little newsy roll call at the top of the month and i will also like you know shout out any kind of extra thing you'd like in terms of like maybe if there's an article or something you have in your pocket you'd like me to share talk about whatever cool or you want to plug something of yours awesome dope um so yeah that's pretty much that i have a free way of contacting me isaiah news one at gmail.com and I'm on all the socials. You know where to find me. Hell, I'm even on Hive now, okay? Okay? okay. Um, so, yeah. Hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.